Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Victor's with Victor. I'm very excited to take you through uh, my life journey. And uh, today I'm at my happy place, Nyakach, which is my ancestral land. And so um, a lot of people ask why most of the time I'm happy. Uh, it's grounding and this is my grounding place. As you can tell, I'm barefoot when I'm here, as opposed to when I'm in Nairobi, the city I walk. Uh, barefooted uh, just to help me ground with grounding and every other thing what is grounding you can tell us what grounding is or your understanding of grounding on the comment section but I think uh, it's probably a therapeutic or a self soothing practice to help you walk through difficult times or anxiety or whatever you could be going through but like I said on the comment section as we continue this video you can tell us your understanding of grounding and what grounding is for you so Nyakach. Nyakach is a place uh, in Kisumu County and uh, the word Nyakach comes from the word Nyakech. What is Nyakech? Nyakech is a Lua word for a Lua word for gazelle. Gazelle is a wild animal. So during the time, during the old days, Nyakach used to be bushy and there were so many gazelles around Nyakach area. So that's why they call it Nyakech, because when people were coming to hunt, they were coming to hunt for Nyakech. So then, uh, I don't know how the word changed from Nyakech to Nyakach, but that is my uh, understanding of uh, what Nyakach is. The beauty about Nyakach is, uh, uh, okay, like I said, this is my ancestral land. Uh, this is where my grandfather comes from. His father, I don't know where his father comes from, but um, I was told, I'll, I'll follow up a brief history of where he came from and then I'll, I'll keep you guys posted but uh, they definitely did not come from here. A lot of Luos were uh, immigrants from different places but Luos were from South Sudan. So um, Nyankachi is a, a hilly area and very fertile as well. As you can tell the green vegetation around us and uh, just the calmness, you hear the, the sound so now you understand why I come here for uh, therapy. So um, as I was saying, my grounding place and uh, so um, I'm going to take you through the short history of how I came to be here and to really get to understand um, my ancestral story and uh, how I really came to be in love with this place. I visit uh, this place at least um, thrice, a, thrice a year and it's because my mom is um, living this side. So, Let's take a seat and enjoy my story and my history in Nyakat. So like I said, this was my ancestral land. Growing up, we used to come here once in a while, December, as a normal Kenyan, or as a normal African kid would be going to see the grandparents uh, during the holidays. And um, so what happened is, I mean, growing up in Kibera and then uh, 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 we, my mom got a job in a three river and we went to a three river but she always wanted to come back to uh, central land we had land uh, which is going to be in the next uh, video I'm going to take you through what we've done with the land and uh, how we're using it so my mom quit employment and then she started doing business the sort of the kind of business we can probably talk to her in the next video again let us know if you're interested to know uh, but as, as a single mother, because uh, my, my, my father died when I was a very little baby, I think two years of age. And so I was raised by her all my years. So then when she retired from uh, employment, uh, she quit employment. Uh, she decided to start business and she did business. At that time, I would say it was good. And it helped her uh, save money to come and build a small house in the village. And so as the last born, I got a chance to stay with my mom <coughs> in the village uh, during that time as she had started and then it wasn't like really very easy. But I think I really learned a lot from that. Uh, and so I did my primary six, seven and eight in the village. Then uh, I passed my exam and I got a scholarship that landed me back again in Kibera where my sister, my first born sister was living. But I think uh, at that age of class six, seven, and eight, I really got uh, in touch with my 
community and I got to really understand uh, who I am, where I'm from and uh, some of the things that, um, you know, make who I am. So I really got to understand that other than the b-boy drink, other than the gang, other than all those names that people call me, when I come back here, I'm Victor Nyango and who essentially is who I am. Yeah, because I think we get lost in all these names that we get branded and especially with superstars and that's why we see a lot of people go through depression, anxiety and all this personality complex stuff. Yeah, so I think I really appreciate that I got uh, in touch with uh, who I am at a very younger age and it's really helped me uh, because I know when I'm going through stuff, when I come here, automatically it's an automatic therapy and healing for me. As you can see, I get direct fresh sunlight, fresh hair around me. So, and I think that's the beauty of it. And then I get to be around my mom as well, who is also my person. And uh, I can really talk about a lot of things. I can be vulnerable with that without being feeling or being of being judged. Yeah. But all in all, so we moved here and my mom built a house. And then as a businesswoman, she started doing a little kidogo business. And my siblings were out. Some of them were still in school. So she was pushing, trying to pay school fees for them and also trying to balance life here, which was kidogo cheap, but also tight, as you know, in the village, money doesn't flow like it does in the city. So that was one of the challenges that we were going through, but we really managed and maneuver. Uh, so, um, and then I got a scholarship to go, that took me back to Kibera again, but this time I think I was more grounded, so it wasn't really easy for me to get influenced or to be a follow-up, I, I was more of a leader because my mom was teaching me to lead uh, uh, in my life. So I, I learned to be a leader. So I, I, it's not easy even right now to just follow what somebody's telling me to do. I really have to wait and see. Ah, do you hear the sound of the birds? That's what I'm talking about. So beautiful. And then the fresh air, the breeze, and then the sun. Yeah, but back to the story. Got me to Kibera and I, done, I did my uh, high school uh, graduate and uh, then I went to college, got another scholarship, went to college and then did my short course with um, SAIT as well. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's pretty much of my journey. So in the next video, I'm gonna take you uh, for a tour to where we started and uh, how we transitioned until we get to the place we are at let us know what you'd like to see in the next comment i'm outside our home i'm in the next video i'm gonna take you through our home and inside our home and then you can really get to see how life has been for me and really get to understand my life and who i am as a person if you are interested please like, comment, share, and also uh, tell us what you'd like. Tell me what you'd like to see on the comment section. And that brings us to the story of who is Victor. Victor, my name is uh, Victor Onyango Diambo. Odiambo is my father's name. Uh, Washington Odiambo Ogonda. Ogonda is my grandfather's name. Uh, Ogonda is my grandfather's name. My grandfather's name is Eustus Ogonda Orao. Or Eusto Ogonda Orao. Orao is his father's name, which is my grand great grandfather's name. And uh, Orao Orao is the most popular name here, and I think the name that's left sta standing out. So there are a lot of families here that are called Orao. So there is Ogonda Corral, that means Ogonda the son of Orao. There is Osage Corral, uh, Osage the son of Orao. And then there is Abudi Corral, Abudi the son of uh, Orao. And uh, there is also Joanna Corral, Joanna Orao, uh, Joanna, the, Johanna the son of Orao, or John the son of Orao. Johanna is a Luo name that translates to John in uh, English, the son of Oral, and um, 
Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The sons of Oral um, are people that I, mo I actually met all of them except one who died before I was born. And I think it was a pleasure because I really got a, a, I got a chance to get wisdom from them. I got a chance to learn with them. Also to go and herd cattle with them. And um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much basically who Victor Onyango Odiambo is. Other than the B-Boy Vic. The, all those names that you see me branded. Those are just me in the village, but in, in the city, but the real me, that's now the real me. So welcome to my life. <clears throat> my experiences growing up are not any unique to any village kid any kid uh, growing up of course I didn't grow up here but I, I lived here for a couple of years but my what I'm saying is my experiences are not any unique from any village kid mm, except that we didn't really have much I think what my mom told me is uh, living in gratitude of everything that you have every day uh, <clears throat> and living a day at a time. Um, growing up in, uh, living in the village, I think it uh, bonded me more to my village people. Uh, I mean, my mom is a strong believer in Christianity, so I grew up. Uh, in a very Christian setup, like praying in the morning, praying during meals, <clears throat> praying at night, and also praying when somebody got home. Like if you left home and came back, you'd pray. If you were leaving home, you'd pray. And I think uh, that also formed the core piece of me being a believer in everything that I indulge myself in. And also, uh, I also, I also got a communion thanks from living with the people in this community because a lot of people here are uh, related in a, in a, in a, a way or the other. But also, there was also an interesting aspect of witchcraft, uh, which I think every other person from Western Kenya would certainly agree with, agree with me. I don't know the truth about it, but uh, there are the, 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 the evident cases of witch doctors. There are people getting like very strange diseases and it's connected to witchcraft and witch doctors. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's one interesting aspect that I want to talk about, Nyawawa. <laughs> if you know about Nyawawa, please. Don't forget to leave a comment. Uh, yeah, it's it's been raining. It was raining, and I think uh, this is also another powerful aspect of being around here. So it's actually rained on me, and I love it. So usually this would happen occasionally, like when we were from school, it would rain on you. When you would go to the market, it probably would randomly rain on you sometimes. And then when you are probably from hustling or uh, doing one, two, three, it would rain on you. And it's totally normal. Some people would shelter. Uh, sometimes I never used to shelter. So in this area where we came and settled, uh, used to be a field, a maize field. So there were only farms around here. We were the first people who settled here. So I'll probably in the next video take you around this village and see how many people came around here after us. Yeah, so it was really strange because I think as the last one I was uh, 
mostly home alone with mom if not school and church and then my siblings most of them are uh, some of them were uh, my sister's married my other sister was still in high school so and it was boarding a through game stream through game if you guys are there please leave a comment and um, my other siblings are older so everybody was in different places so i was around with my mom a lot <coughs> And so um, my mom would travel and leave me alone sometimes. But I, you know, I, I was taught to take care of myself. I knew how to cook ugali, make uh, major meal, major meals for myself. So it was uh, pretty much okay. Yeah, and when she was gone, I think what's interesting is because this used to be a huge maize field. Like now it's farming season, then you have maize around so i would have to be in the house even when my mom was around during um farming seasons you'd have to be in the house i think by six because there were wild animals hyenas like i told you the story of nyakach nyakech if you remember the gaza gazelle yeah there were hyenas here um i think my first encounter with a cheetah was around here uh, which was pretty interesting as well. Uh, so we also we also border Ainamoy constituency, uh, which is um, was in Gishu. Is it was yeah Ainamoy constituency? That's all I know. I think it was in Gishu County. Yeah, and I don't know. You can tell me where Ainamoy is in the comment section. Uh, but uh, it, uh, we border the Kalenjins, which is another interesting challenge that I'd really like to talk about in the video as well. So they uh, they have hills around and they have forest. So a lot of wild animals should come from there at night and come this side and uh, uh, invade some of the homes, eat cattle and stuff like that. Yeah, but I think one one loud animal that used to be very annoying at night was the hyena. You know the I, the sound the hyena makes at night. It was very scary, and also and your encounter with them was actually very annoying, if you know hyenas and their behaviors. But what other aspect do I want to talk about? Uh, yes, uh, witchcraft. I've already talked about. Let me know in the comment section what you'd like me to talk about next about uh, us uh, water and accessibility we have a river called our watch our watch is our main source of water here that we use also drinking water it's clean the source is just up here from up here uh capture rock so um it's quite clean and it's quite uh you can drink it or once you boil it of course <clears throat> And then, uh, yeah, I used to go to church every Saturday. My mom used to be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, a staunch believer. But now she goes to a different denomination. We can talk to her about that as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, church every Saturday. I believe it in conventions. Kiche, the Lures called it Kiches. Uh, that was one celebratory moment uh, during the year. And uh, what else? What else? Yes. I, I, here I lived a virgin. <laughs> yes, yes, my mama used to be very tired, so any encounter I'd get, and she used to talk to me about sex, not engaging in sex, and that time, you remember, HIV used to be very strong, especially in this region, of Nyanza. Yeah, so she would tell me point blank that if you get yourself involved sexually, with ladies you would probably get hiv and we had some it, pretty bad if i think about it it's like uh, how do i call it stigma because they used to use some of the example of people who are infected by hiv but the cases were quite unique because somebody would be very like him if you know you know but i think that also really helped me not getting into or getting involved into sexual intercourse like uh a loop dog soothed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else? What else? What else? What else?